So our next speaker is Peggy Lewis. She's coming to us from Vermont. She is a lifelong activist for women's rights and even built her own home. I mean, that's extraordinary. She spent a dec decade as director of the Burlington Women's Council and developed training for women in the trades. She has taught ecology and feminism at the Institute for Social Ecology and helped set up Women Against Rape and worked on the Common Woman newspaper. So, Peggy, your turn. All right. Um, it's amazing to be here with all these women. Uh, Phyllis, your work has been so important to me. Uh, women in Madness was very, very saved my life early on in my lesbian coming out. Um, anyway, but I was thinking about, um, I, I guess I say in my piece something about how I hate that trope that you hear in advertising and on the television. This is not your mother's this or that, or not your father's, you know, like that's that's the most important thing that it couldn't be. And 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 I was thinking about what it, how ageism is such a potent weapon of divide and conquer because it cuts us off in generations. And and I, I was thinking about what imagine, you know it's been so painful to have these young women who are almost like a counterinsurgency to feminism, you know, being pro-porn, pro-prostitution, pro-trans, and, um, and, and what it would be like, what a wonderful thing it would be, you know, so we're dividing mothers and daughters and grandmothers and what, it, imagine how incredible it would be if we were united, if we had the wisdom and the tactics of the older women and the energy and the knowledge of the zeitgeist of the younger women, and we work together. But I did want to mention, because I saw this this morning and it was really heartening to me, um, women, um, the Michigan Women's Music Festival, which is something I attended a lot. In fact, several years I worked there as a carpenter, mostly building accessibility toilets and ramps and so on. Um, but, um, what was I trying to say about that? Um, that um, oh, that, so, so there was something called the Michigan Family Reunion, which a lot of women got together in Michigan on the same land that the festival had been had, and much smaller. But what was, what was wonderful to read this morning was a young woman saying how incredible it had been for her to be in this space. That for the, it was, it sounded almost as though the first time in her life people listened to her and cared about her. And she particularly, she talked about, you know, being moved to tears when they were singing Amazon Women, and not only because of the joy of it, but because she felt like she was being let into this secret society and this history, and she was being welcomed into it. And I just thought that was a wonderful thing to read. And it would be lovely if we had more of that, you know, where we really had, you know, had ways to welcome women in and they were open to it. So um, in the last bunch of years, um, I've, I've been retired. I, I did spend 10 years as uh, the head of the Burlington Women's Council. When I started, Bernie Sanders was the mayor. Um, and that was for about a year or two. And um, I did get, it was kind of wonderful because uh, one of the things that women rarely get to do is look at the big picture and plan ahead. I mean, we've had rape crisis centers and battered women's shelters, and those are always in crisis mode. So the Women's Council had membership, it had at-large members, but it also had members from all the various women's groups. So we had people from really radical groups and some, and even, you know, the, the business and professional women. So we had a, a wide, span of women but what was wonderful and that women so seldom get to do is that we got to work together plan together and and map out larger strategies like getting women into the trades 
we tried to institute um, a new uh, a program against violence against women, but we didn't get as far without. Our, I mean, they wouldn't let us in the schools and to do the plans that we had, but we did. We were very successful around women in the trades. Uh, we we wanted to find something that would actually take women out of poverty and the the trades women you know had the possibility to make more money and prior to that i had um been i i came out as a lesbian in 1973 before that i was in a cr group and in early on i was part of uh women against rape this someone just gave me this recently our old thing women against rape which was war and then it became the women's rape crisis center and now it calls itself hope works just to make sure you know i mean i was told one of the things that i did manage to do when i was um um the director of the women's council was to get the city to pay for self-defense classes for women and girls and um and then when I left that position after a lot of, after a certain betrayal, but anyway, when I left that position, the city was still willing to give the money to do that. But I could not get the rape crisis center to accept it. They told me that um, they weren't strident like I was and my group were. But as far as I can tell, it was mostly my cohort who accomplished all of this. So life has been, um, Retired has been nice, and I started a group uh, just before, uh, it's in my story, just before the lockdown, we had started a group called Gender Critical Vermont. I don't even like the words gender critical now, but it, it, Vermont has one of the worst laws. It has a law saying that uh, transgender surgery can be done on anybody, no lower age limit, which I think is a terrible law. And the young woman who introduced that now wants to introduce uh, um, legalizing prostitution. And I've opposed that. And so I've been told, well, I'm wrong on all the issues, aren't I? I mean, where we would agree is that we don't want prostituted women to be criminalized, but um, I'd, you know, I, I favor the Nordic model and not, and I know the facts of, you know, legalized prostitution is not a good thing. So I loved, um, I saw Phyllis do that whole um, interpretation of the Henry Henry's speech in at uh, Kate. I saw it online at Kate Millett's memorial, and I feel very much like that. That I wouldn't have missed it for anything. It's not been easy. I I was raked over the coals when I left my position as the women's council. People tried to destroy my reputation. They did a fair job of it, but um, I bounced back from that. And more recently, I've had to deal with uh, being persona non grata for my position of not, not you know, of, of knowing that um, you can't really change sex. And I was, I, I, I was trying to go to a, a thing for a colleague and I was met by three police cars called called by the Peace and Justice Center. I guess that was their idea of nonviolent communication to keep me from this. Um, most of the women walked out with me, but um, and that's just kind of where we are now. But um, I do see that beginning to change and I and I am connecting with different women and uh, We'll continue. I just can't imagine, you know, I just think it's really important. We're in a, a tremendous struggle. And I think that uh, we just, we have, to, well, the way we have to look at it is, 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 is to recognize it as testament to our power. When, the real thing that, that they can't stand is women bonding, women getting together. And I know, and we all know you know, that that's not simple. That's one of the things I watch with young women. They're, they're shocked that women can be difficult and nasty to each other. And, uh, you know, it's like, I just want to say to them, well, radical feminism has never been an easy path. I mean, it's, I wouldn't, you know, I, I, I'm certainly glad I took it, but it's not easy. And, and you have to have, you know, you have to have a little, you have to have some courage and some persistence to stick with it because it isn't easy. And I always liked, um, remembering what uh, Flo Kennedy, a wonderful black woman who was one of the first 
people I saw in the women's movement when I still lived in New York saying that if you think power corrupts, try powerlessness. And I, I think that's something that we have to understand when we're dealing with horizontal hostility. That's kind of a lot of where it comes from, that sense of powerlessness. And when you, when you have a little, then often it's the person next to you that uh, is being attacked. So um, I encourage young women. For a while, I worked with a whole group of young women, and we did some wonderful stuff. They got themselves... They got a, 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 a really nasty rapist frat off of campus and they, they got on the Dr. Drew show to talk about it. But then they all went to some conference where they took transgender 101 and they came back wanting to do that. And I just, I just said, well, I'm not up for that. And I will, I'm, you know, I'm not going to do that. You, should do, you, you need to do what you need to do. And they, they kind of fell apart off that, but we did do some great work. Two good years. On you for that. <laughs> huh? Would good you say? You. Good on you for doing that. Yeah, it was it was great for a while it lasted, but uh, unfortunately, you know, and again, I mean that's what I have seen mostly. The thing that has made me most anxious to work around this is the fact that that what I've seen it do is destroy so many um, organizations, you know, tear them apart like OLAC. And the other thing, oh, the other thing I wanted to say is that I I was shocked to realize, I mean, it, it took me a while to realize that radical feminism was really gone. And I had decided what I would do is teach it online. I do have a regular TV show that I've done, a local access I've done for, I don't know, 12, 15 years now. And a couple of them are on YouTube. But one of the things that inspired me there was I was reading, was looking at some of the reading and looking at um, detransitioners um, stories. And several of them mentioned finding radical feminism and understanding there was another way they could look at their lives. I mean, and I, Peggy, you know, Peggy, we're actually going to have to move on. I'm afraid. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. that's fine. I just wanted to say that that, that yeah, they, no, I, I totally agree. Feminism. We have a book about the transition coming up in a couple of months, so hopefully that will also help to get the word out. And it's somebody who was. Uh, very much assisted by coming to radical feminism. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's, that's fantastic.